Hey everybody, I'm wearing my cool shades today. Memorial Day weekend shades. Everybody, welcome to City Side. We're going to start our morning service. Come on in, grab a seat. Oh, give him the love, give him the love. Thanks for being here on this summer, summer, summer day. Welcome, Amen. live streamers. Thank you for being here. Yes. Hey, live streamers. <laughs> Reverend Mark, you ready for this? All right. I love City Side. I'm a friend of God. Good morning, City Side. It's so good to see some fresh faces out there. Good morning. It's such a refreshing day. I am a friend of God. Mm. Mm. How about a little pour yourself a drink? Side is continuously growing, and as the sweet presence of God continues to surround this place, we ask God to pour.
city side.
Oh, we're not done. Come on. In the spiritual community, here in City Side, we believe in love and glory, and knowing that God is our true friend. God is a friend of all of us. And anything and everything that we do.
Good morning, City Side. Are you all awake now? Yeah. Let's give it up for Philip and the band. <laughs> Philip, Philip, seriously, I am so grateful for everything that you guys do. You just bring it every single morning. Oh my God, it's so good. So my name is Russell Gear. I am one of your assistant ministers in training. And uh, today I'm here to tell you about, uh, can we get our next slide please, Don? Uh, we are all about leading people into a transformational relationship with God. And we do that by bringing our spiritual awakening into the world as love, kindness, and compassion in action. Can I get the next slide, please? Yeah. And we are a social media friendly uh, spiritual community. So please, 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 Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Carrier Pigeon, Smoke Signal, whatever it is that you want to do to get people to know about us, um, please, please, please feel free to do that. Um, all we ask is that you please silence your phones during the service today. And um, we also, actually, can you go back down? Uh, I just want to point that out for people. Uh, we do have a new Instagram account, too. Um, it's kind of hard to see here, but it's Instagram.com slash CitysideChicago. Um, so if you're an Instagrammer, that's where we are now. And if you are new here today, if it's your first time, um, you see all these lovely yes and cards spread out on the chairs, please fill that out so that we can get to know you. Um, that helps us to uh, get you plugged in here, gets you on our newsletter every week. We promise we will not spam you, um, but you will find out what's going on here because there's a lot of really cool stuff. And uh, now's our time to meet and greet and say hello to each other. And our icebreaker today is, do you have a favorite Chicago summer festival, which I know is a really, really hard question to answer. So please uh, stand up, say hello to your neighbors. inside that place where the timeless divine resides and what I recognize here and now is the infinite nature of that divine the infinite nature of that one that presence that power this thing that I call God that I know is so much more than just that name it is all and it is the one and I know that it creates through the power of its love its life and its joy and I know that each and every person here at Cityside Spiritual Community, we are all one with God. We are all the divine made manifest in human form, perfect, whole, and complete. We are love, we are life, we are joy. And so knowing this oneness, this unity, I simply bless this service today, knowing that there is a divine opening, a divine appointment here for each and every person who has decided to be here at Cityside today. I know that each and every beautiful person here today is able to hear the message specifically for them. 
I speak a special blessing over Reverend Mark Anthony Lord, knowing that he is an open and divine channel through which God is teaching and inspiring and just bringing forth its divine bliss today. I know that this is holy, holy ground, and that is good. And together we say, and so it is. And so let us just remain in this divine space as we begin our time of centering. And as we begin to experience the beautiful summer days outside, I invite us to find within us that divine summer. That part within that is blue skies, warm weather, that is filled with a playfulness.
to come back to your body. Maybe wiggle your fingers or your toes, roll your shoulders, whatever it takes to remind you of your body. And when you feel ready, please open your eyes and smile. for being here today. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Whatever that means for you. Some people, it has a very nice personal meaning to it, warms your heart, whatever it means to you. Enjoy that and know that we honor your path here. The Buddha said, you yourself, as much as anybody else in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. One of my favorite Buddha quotes. So read that in. You yourself, as much as anybody else in the entire universe deserve your love and affection. Mm. Last week, we talked about the, um, the need for the ego to be right. Yes. And we looked at how um, that can really trap us into separation, into um, really getting ourselves stuck and disconnecting from God. Yes. And it's not so easy to give up being right, especially when you are, right? <laughs> and sometimes that is the very call. That, that is when, when you know that, no, 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 I really am right about the, the facts and what happened. And yet Spirit's saying, even now, can you just let that go? Can you let that go and just trust me that there's something higher? happening, maybe for the other person. Maybe there's a grace that's needed that only you can bring in that moment if you're willing to release that. So I hope you'll continue exploring and noticing when that rises up inside of you. But I'm right! If you could just open that a little bit and let it go. One of the ways that the ego keeps you genuinely believing that you're right, is through this thing called projection. Yes. I'm going to talk about that today. We'll see if I can unpack that in a way that helps you grow in your understanding of what that is. Projection is your perception. That's yes. what it is. Psychological projection is a theory. It's an actual theory in psychology in which humans defend themselves against their own unconscious impulses or qualities. It's a way that you defend yourself against your own impulses and qualities. That's what projection is. And what it does is it pushes it out of you and it splats it. That's a technical term, I mean. <laughs> it's a very high holy word. Um, <laughs> splats it onto another person, persons, or experience so that it looks like and in a very real way to you, it's happening over there. And more importantly, it's not in here. You literally can't find it or associate. You disassociate. It is a form of disassociation where something that you don't want to see, know, believe, or experience about yourself, you see it in another. It's very um, dramatically done all over the world. All over the world is happening. But a specific very dramatic example I can give you, and it's an interesting one, is, is say there's a couple that's in an abusive relationship. And the one person is very, very aggressive and angry and rageful and attacking. And the other person is so nice and so mousy and so innocent 
and so quiet. And what is hard for either of them to even fathom is that they're literally projecting out of themselves that who the other person is appearing. And the more that you project it out, the more dramatically it will show up in your world, which is just a fascinating thing. So a person, for a person's growth, especially if you're in a relationship where you polarize each other and you lock each other in the opposite ends of the spectrum, the growth and the awakening comes when the person who's filled with rage can begin to see that there, there can be some niceness. They can surrender and relax. And the person who is only nice and so nice and mousy can begin to rise up and own some of their disowned anger and upsets and even rage. That is the chat. That's what we pay a therapist a lot of money for, right? That that is the game, and that is to me a part of our spiritual awakening to do just that. Byron Katie says, "Everything you think you see on the outside is really a projection of your own mind. Everything is a mirror image of your own thinking." There's an important word in here. It's everything. Fascinating <coughs> idea. Fascinating idea to move through your world where everything that you see is in your mind. Amen. It's just, it, it's really, really trippy. You literally do not see with your human eyes. Mm -hmm. You do not see with your human eyes. You project what you believe onto the canvas of life. You know, when you dream at night, you have so much freedom and your mind will just create oceans and mountains and yeah. bowling alleys and bowling alleys in the ocean and like just anything like it just will it will absolutely create and it will bring into the dream people you know sometimes people you don't know it's an amazing thing to watch and it will even project you into the experience of what's happening in your dream state think about this for a moment it's quite interesting. The only thing not interesting about it is when someone wants to tell you their dream, right? But we, we don't like that. When someone says, I want to tell you my dream last night, he goes, ugh. And you know why? <laughs> I think I have the answer why that is. Because you're not remotely related to it. It is their projection in a private world, and there's absolutely no connection. There's, or it's just boring. I don't know. But I'm trying to give a really good reason why it might be so, is that there's no relationship whatsoever to someone else's private dream in the nighttime. Of course, miracles would say this experience that we're having here is the same thing. It's actually a dream. It's such a trippy idea. I don't expect us to fully unpack that today, but at least contemplate it. Let it, I hope that it send you out for the day thinking about this. Because even if we can't get it right, the idea that you're willing to think about, this is a dream. And when I dream at night, it's a dream within a dream. Now, what keeps the dream going is this thing called projection. And the projection has one specific goal in mind. And it is to disconnect you from God disconnect you from your source, from the experience of oneness, of wholeness. That would be, if you're experiencing oneness and wholeness, that would be another definition, in my opinion, of this thing called God. You would be, you'd be in that experience of it. But projection slices and dices and divides and makes you separate. It causes you to push away. It keeps the ego construct in place. The ego construct that says, I'm separate, I have to protect myself, you're dangerous, I'm here, you're there, you're bad, I'm good. This does not exist in the thinking and the mind of God whatsoever. None of that exists there. So if you are existing in that mindset, you are not existing in the flow of spirit. So that literally, just think about that for a moment, when you're judging another, judging yourself, by the way, or whatever, when you're dividing and separating, you are separating from this thing called God. And God only flows in the goodness of your being. That's why some of the teachings, like Course in Miracles says, what if your only job today would to be happy? Yeah. And that could really upset the mind. Well, I can't be happy when this is happening and this is happening and that isn't balanced and this isn't working and that person's an idiot. <laughs> right? I mean, that's what the mind says. 
And the spirit every moment could say, you could just choose to be happy. What would it be like to choose that? And really what it's saying, what would it be like to connect, to reconnect to the part of you that is in the flow, the part of you that knows where it's going, the part of you that can really magnetize what you desire and make your dreams come true, that part of you that we talk about, that's what we're saying. We say, be happy today. And maybe that's too big of a word. It's the wrong word for us to use, maybe at a certain point of our evolution. Maybe instead of saying be happy, we should just simply say, how can you be connected to the spirit of your being today? And if the spirit of your being is a vibration of love, how can you get yourself closer to being that today versus continuing to separate and divide, separate and divide? I got this on the internet yesterday. It says, projection will always hurt you. It's interesting. It will always hurt you. It reinforces your belief in your own split mind, and its only purpose is to keep the separation going. It is solely a device of the ego to make you feel different from your brothers and sisters and separate from them. The ego justifies this on the bogus grounds that it makes you seem better than they are or worse than they are. It doesn't even matter. It, is, it just wants to separate you. So it's like, if you want to feel better, great. If you want to feel worse, the ego will go there just as quickly. It doesn't even matter. Separation is its goal. Um, projection and attack are inevitably related because projection is always a means of justifying attack. You see, once you projected some part of you and you disassociate from it and you believe you're separate from it, now you give yourself authority to be right about it and to even attack it. Anyone know there's war going on in this world all the time? Yes, sir. The very game that's being played out in a macro level is this idea is we, we must forget that we're separate from them. They're the enemy and therefore we have a right to do whatever we're going to do. It goes on to say, anger without projection is impossible. That's interesting. That's interesting to complex to contemplate anger without projection is impossible. Not making anger wrong, but could you use anger? This would be a way to positively use that emotion to say, I'm feeling angry, what am I projecting? See, if we can use anger to bring us back to ourselves and discover where the separation is, then we use anger for our good. We use it to release the energy, we use it to open ourselves up, and it must, we must ultimately use it on the spiritual path to come back to ourselves, Amen. right? Yes. That's, that's, that's a great idea. The ego uses projection only to distort your perception of both yourself and your brothers and sisters. It begins by excluding something you think exists in you which you do not want, and leads directly to your excluding yourself from others. So these ideas, like, I want you to just breathe this in for a moment. Like, even close your eyes. And breathe in these thoughts. This is a backward sermon, but I promise I'm going to get you there. I am jealous. Let's mm. breathe that in. I am stupid. I am insensitive. I am mean. I'm a wimp, I'm a bitch, I'm a killer, I'm a rapist, I'm a homeless person, I'm a rich person. Take a breath for a moment. Open your eyes. I, I imagine you might have hit one or a couple that you just couldn't find. Mm -hmm. And that's totally cool. That's kind of a bit of the point of it, is, is to just see how far can you go until you hit the line that says, oh no, that, no. And that's just the place to be curious 
I'm not saying make it, I'm not good, bad, right, or wrong. I'm not, not pushing you over the line and making you go there. I want you to find the line and just notice how far does, I'll say it in my language, uh, or our language, how far does my God go today? Oh, my God only goes this far. Over there, well, now I guess let's call that the devil or evil or something wrong. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what could happen if my God could go further out and become larger? The way that my God becomes larger is when it first becomes larger in here. When I can locate the part of me that at least this lifetime hasn't killed another human being. I sure have killed people in my thoughts. <laughs> I sure have killed divine ideas, you know? I mean, there's ways that we can cut someone down with a look. We can slash someone with a couple words. Yeah. So I can certainly know that I killed people's um, dreams, possibility with the roll of an eye, you know, like with my judgments. What harm might I have caused them that actually is ricocheting back here and doing the same thing to myself? So that's where it becomes just interesting for us. Again, no, I, just no shame or blame here. We want to really be immersed in a big, huge vibration of love and acceptance because that's what allows us to begin looking. And the reason we're looking is because the, the, when you wake up, and in, in even a little bit in your spirituality, the game becomes healing the projections, mm -hmm. using the projections to help us see where it is we're being called to do our work. Some of you know, many of you know, um, someone I just adore, Maureen Muldoon, who has a, a little spiritual center out in the suburbs. And I did some work with her for a couple of years. We would do the Course in Miracles morning lessons together. And she always used this wonderful way of saying, she'd go, this is your classroom. Yeah. This is your classroom and it's yours. Now are you gonna quit complaining about it and get into it and start being in your classroom and start facing it and working with it and using it. It's so, so seductive to judge my classroom and think your classroom's better. Or you've got something going on and go, oh, thank God that's not my classroom. You know, the way that we compare and, and despair instead of just, this is my classroom. And this is what's here for me. And what if I could trust what's here for me as being mine because it's the perfect thing to lead me home, to get me back into my heart, to get me back into compassion, to get me back connected with the spirit of my being. My classroom is perfectly designed for me. Take a breath on that. There's nothing wrong with your classroom. And I do it. I believe me. I'm not. I'm, I'm definitely talking to myself here. It's like, well, at this age, I should be this and I should be that, and my neighbor's that, and he's ten years younger. Like I've got all this comparison going on, and and I don't know. It, as I'm getting older, it can get a little worse in some ways because I've got these stories of how I thought it was supposed to be. Anyone? Yes. Anyone have a story of yes. how we thought yes. it was going to be? Yes. That's our suffering. And yet if we'll just be in our own classroom, love it. It is, it, 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 it is destined to change when you get related to it, when you get inside of it, when you begin working with it. Yeah. That's when it does begin to We're not forever locked in a classroom like you're a victim and just suffer through it. That very thing that's in your classroom is the very thing that is here to set you free, to love yourself and become who you're here to become. Yeah. It's the perfect place to be. But projection is the game that keeps us out of it, that keeps us separate from it. We project out all of these negative things I shared, but the other expense is that we also project out what's called your golden shadow. You have your, uh, the shadow, which is those shadow parts that I just described that we don't want to own, but it also causes, you can't not own here and own up here. Then you're just like a crazy narcissist or something, which it's the same problem. <laughs> But the more we can own the depth of growing downward in our spirit and what's there in the muck, for lack of a better word, the benefit is we also get to extend into the golden light that we're here to be. I know many of us have heard this story, but I was like, I'm using it this week. The idea of the golden Buddha. 1957, the monastery in Thailand, when they had to move, they were moving, and so they had to move a gigantic 
gigantic Buddha, absolutely enormous, taller than the ceiling kind of a thing. And it took all the monks to move this to their new location. And they worked all day, morning, early morning into the afternoon, into the evening, and they still hadn't got it to its new location, but they had to stop for the day. And so they set it down. And when they set it down, a, a little crack happened inside the Buddha. And so they went to bed and it started to rain that night. And one of the monks woke up. And as the story goes, he went out to see that the Buddha was doing okay and he was ex inspecting it with a flashlight. And in the crack, something started shining back at him. And so he started to chip away at the, at the what was over it, the cement, uh, the, I don't know what you call it in this moment. But as he chipped away at the stone, what was inside was gold. A pure gold Buddha. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, the Burmese army came and attacked this particular monastery. And to save their precious golden Buddha, they literally covered it with mud, with cement. And, as, and then all of them got killed. And then as time went by, no, they forgot. No one knew that was underneath there. They literally thought the ugly gray stone Buddha was their precious thing. That is such a great story for us because our projection, all that disowned part becomes the shell that we're living inside. And we forget that when we can just clear it and clear it and chip away and chip away and chip away, like that story, pure gold will be revealed. It's, it's just such a good, a true story that when they took up all that was covering it up, a solid gold Buddha was revealed. So this is why we do this work. This is why we chip away at the muck. And sometimes we have to talk about it. Sometimes we have to say, look at it. What is it made of? What are the ingredients of yours? You need to name it sometimes. And the more you can name it and claim it and own it and transform it, the faster you get to the golden Buddha that's inside of you. So how do we do the work. Well, I'll stick with the Course in Miracles lesson today because the Course in Miracles says the one way to heal your perceptions is through the practice of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It says forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother and sister did to you. When forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother or sister did to you has not occurred. That's huge. It does not pardon sins and make them real. It sees there was no sin. This is really trippy, and I want to go all the way there. It just said, forgiveness makes you release that which never happened. Why did it ultimately never happen? Because it's a dream. And because if it's not of God, it's not ultimately real. It becomes the only thing that you get to choose everything against. Is it of God? No. Therefore, it's not real. Now, if that's too big of a trippy idea for you, try this out. <clears throat> when I say, <clears throat> excuse me, not real, say not real with a capital R. Capital R real is everything that's eternal and extends forever and comes from the love that you are. Small R real are the things that come out of fear, and they last only as long as you feed them. Everything made out of fear has an expiration date. You know that. You've proven it yourself. Things you used to be afraid of, when they're done, they, they, don't, <clears throat> they don't even exist. You know, I used to be scared to death. Can I get some water? <clears throat> Someone help me. Thank you. I'll take this. Um, thank you. I, I was one of those kids who used to be afraid that something was under my bed. And so every night, I would use all my blankets to stuff, <laughs> to stuff the bed. And I had this ritual that I would do to keep myself safe so that I could go to sleep. That was very real to me as a kid. And no one could tell me it wasn't because that's what was inside of me. Obviously, that's not real with a capital R. That's real with a small R because once I grew up and... You know, I was about 22, I decided to stop doing that. 
I'm kidding, 20, it was 20. <laughs> Not a day over. <clears throat> but those childhood things we can look back and go, oh, I used to be really afraid of that. Now, that doesn't exist inside of you, and so all of it disappears. And there's really, like you get it, like that was just a crazy idea. Now I understand that certain things that happen to you in this physical plane that really, really feel real, I'm not saying go into spiritual bypass. Mm -hmm. You need to go through them. Yeah. You need to feel them and you need to heal them, whatever that means to you. But you will, if you stay on the spiritual path, you will find for yourself that your God doesn't, doesn't leave anything that is a pain and suffering in you. It all gets to disappear. It all will be dissolved as you continue to grow and glow in the golden Buddha that you are. Amen. And the way to do that is through this thing called forgiveness. Forgiveness means a willingness to just let it go. I think it's the best definition of forgiveness I had today. Letting it go. Letting the story go, letting the past go, letting what happened go, letting whatever that person is or isn't go, letting me think in whatever about them should happen go, letting it all go. The thing is, you can't do that for yourself, in my experience. You need a friend <coughs> to make that happen. And the friend that, <coughs> you sorry, I don't know what's going on. The friend, that the Course in Miracles talks about is the Holy Spirit. Mm. Now, the Holy Spirit, stay with me on this, according to this teaching, the moment that you believed yourself separate from God, the moment that idea came to you, the solution came with it. Have you ever heard the idea, every problem comes with a solution? Mm -hmm. Every problem has, with it, its answer. It's an interesting idea. And it's a great way to move through life, by the way. Instead of saying, I can't find the problem, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, lay that down and say, you know what, if there's a problem here, there's a solution here. That has to be. That has to be. And so when this one tiny mad idea, which is what it's called, one tiny mad idea that I'm separate from God, when that came into thought, individually, collectively, whatever, whatever, let's not even worry about the when did it happen. It's not, not, that's an impossible question to answer. But it happened. The moment it happened, the solution appeared. And the solution is called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is, think of it as a bright light that is inside of you that never forgot. It's, it anchors you home. And it's always there, and it always, and it has the highest purview of whatever's happening. You can always, you don't, you get to do such simple work if you will bring the Holy Spirit into everything. Holy Spirit, please forgive this. Holy Spirit, guide me on what to do. Holy Spirit, help me. Like you could all day long call upon the divine wholeness and intelligence, the light that has been given you to wake up from the dream. That's what we're talking about. But some of us, especially, can misunderstand the teaching of some of these new thought ideas like the science of mind, which is one of the things we study here, where it's like, I am this, and I am this. And I've heard proud science of mind people say, I don't need an intermediary. I'm like, well, you kind of do. We all do. We all do. I mean, with you looking at great teachers like Yogananda, who gladly embraced helpers along his path, I'm like, I will get as much help as I can receive. The principles of that teaching are brilliant, but they can't let us become, they can't let the ego grab a hold and then we have to muscle up and make something happen. That's what we do in our Western world. We try to make it happen. We try to figure it out. We become fiercely independent, including pushing out the door, the Holy Spirit. The wholeness of spirit that is inside of you that you can turn to for help, for guidance, for acceptance, for for. for love. It's inside of you and it remembers the part that didn't fall asleep, the part that's not in the dream. That part will pull you back awake to where you actually are, which is in the kingdom of heaven. So forgiveness 
is our way, and all you have to do is ask for it to be done. Don't even try to figure it out. I'm feeling upset. I'm feeling separate. Holy Spirit, let forgiveness set me free here. That's it. That can be your, your comment all day long. In fact, this is yours for the upcoming week. This is my world, my creation. I ask that forgiveness set me free to see the glory of God within and all around me. How nice is that, right? This is my world, my creation. This is my world, my projection, my creation. I ask that forgiveness set me free. I don't even need to say specifically what it is. I'm just asking, set me free so that I can see the glory of God within and all around me. Breathe that in. Let's use that to move into prayer. Take a deep breath. I think the singers get so wrapped in the talk they forget. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take a deep breath again. I'm going to say this again, breathe it in. This is my, actually repeat it after me. This is my world. This is my world. My creation. My creation. I ask that forgiveness set me free. I ask that forgiveness set me free. To see the glory of God. The glory of God within and all around me. Within and all around me. Breathe. Open your hands. Lift your chin up. Just begin saying yes inside of in the faith to shine the light into the darkest pot pockets of our being. Even the parts we don't know are there so that we can see them heal, so that we can see them become transformed, so that we can see the golden Buddha literally rise up in the, from the middle of the muck, from the middle of the lie, from the belief in separation. This golden light rises up. The phoenix rises up in the center of your being, in your mind, in your heart, in your body, in your soul. Awaken. Surrender. I ask that forgiveness set me free today. I ask that forgiveness set me free today. I ask that forgiveness set me free today. Say it. I ask that forgiveness set me free today. 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 I 
ask that forgiveness set me free today. I ask that forgiveness set me free today. I ask that forgiveness set me free today. I ask that forgiveness set me free today. I ask that forgiveness set me free today. I ask that forgiveness set me free today. I ask that forgiveness set me free today. I ask that forgiveness set me free today. Breathe. Accept the awakening that is here for us today, and we become willing to walk in it, to speak from it, to claim it over and over and over. In gratitude for the fulfillment of this prayer, I release it now. I let it go. I let it be. And so it is. Amen. Good work. Um, can we get the next slide, please? Yes. Um, so why don't we all say our blessing together? Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. Thank you so much for your gifts today. space, but they also enrich you and open you up to the divine flow, so we all get out of this. It's great. All right, so let's do our announcements, and we have a new name, new location, new website. Well, obviously, you know we have a new location, but still. Um, so uh, www.cityside.me. The new website is brilliant, you guys. Please check it out. Marcia did a lot of amazing work on it. It is fabulous, so please check it out. There's a lot of really cool stuff there. 
And um, the virtual meet and greet is going to be every first Monday of the month, 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Um, if you would like to be part of that meet and greet, um, Reverend Mark, you're on that, correct? Yes, so Reverend Mark will be there and tell you a little bit more about Cityside. And um, it's kind of hard to see here, but you can RSVP with Yes And um, back there with Connie, or you can go to the website cityside.me and uh, RSVP there as well. And again, if you are new here, please fill out that Yes And card so that we can get to know you and help you get plugged in here. Uh, there's a lot of really amazing things that we have coming up, so we want you to be part of that. And all right, that's it for announcements here. In your hand. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I got one more. I'm one more. Thank you, Marcus. Like, see, I'm all spaced out from your talk, too, seriously. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to call out Elastic Arts actually has a benefit on uh, next Friday, June 1st that they're doing here. There's going to be a lot of really, really great stuff going on here. Um, let me see here. What do they got here? Um, Jeff Parker, Joshua Abrams, Elastic Achievement Awardman, um, uh, Wardy, uh, Avriel Rat, Ra I'm pronouncing, mispronouncing that. Um, a lot of really cool people are going to be here. And I also wanted to invite up our wonderful Philip to talk about something that he's doing too. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. yes which yes. I know he is more than happy to do. Yeah. I am. First of all, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you uh, that has welcomed uh, me in and this entire family and welcomed yourselves into this new community at Cityside. I'm so grateful for Reverend Mark Anthony Lord, who is a dad to me. And I, love you. And I thank you seriously. It's not, it's not easy. It's not easy being a leader and, and being a person in ministry and leading people to be the best that they are and the best that they can be. And trust me, it's a spiritual journey. So I'm so grateful for this community of Cityside and what we are doing. And please continue to invite your friends and invite your family members and, and welcome them into this wonderful space that we are creating because Cityside is gonna take over the city of Chicago, okay? <laughs> and that's the truth, all right? So don't let this fool you. This is a really intimate space right now and it's a beautiful thing. And one of the, um, I would just really love to see you all out on Tuesday night at 7.30 at Old St. Pat's. Um, Greg Woods and I uh, have been a part of a wonderful community uh, choir called the Chicago Artist Chorale with great vocals, uh, great uh, music uh, that we'll be presenting on Tuesday evening at Old St. Pat's at 7.30. Uh, you'll get to see our group Mosaic uh, featured in the concert, but also you'll get to see Chicago Artist Chorale, uh, which is conducted by a wonderful young man, Tommy uh, Vindefredo, uh, who has opened himself up to providing a community for artists all around the city of Chicago. And to be able to do this in a, in a beautiful uh, space such as uh, Old St. Pat's, it's a blessing. So we would love to see you out. Tickets are $25, but it supports everyone in the effort of the arts. Yes, five dollars out tomorrow. But thank you all and we love you and we're gonna conclude with Blessed Always. So if you can just stand to your feet and sing with us. Okay, we're also asking people to take two wristbands with you and yes. give one away. Yes. That's our uh, kind of our little promotion thing. If we just has passed, leave it at the, you don't even have to give it to someone. Just drop it off at the Starbucks, put it at the grocery store. Just pass it on somewhere out there. We have more too. Yeah, so grab a handful. Take a deep breath as we move into our closing song. Bless it always.
ways that the Holy Spirit, the whole spirit of God, of love, of life, has revealed itself in this thing called Cityside Spiritual Community. I give great thanks for each person here that answered the call from within you to come and receive your message to expand your soul and to awaken to the spirit of love that you are. We take a moment to extend this love out into this beautiful city, knowing that it is good and it is so. Thank you. Have some donuts, make some friends, do some blessings.